My name's Adam Beacock. I work at Manchester City Football Club. I did sport and business management and graduated um, about two and a half years ago. Um, so yeah, studied Leeds Met Sport and Business 2009 to 2012. Um, Lisa can probably vouch for me. I wasn't one of the top students. I wouldn't say I was a bad student, but um, I definitely wasn't one of the, the top students, but still managed to, to, to do quite well um, after university. So the memorable, memorable moment uh, from university is residential. Um, I can remember me and my friends not being too happy, uh, missing Freshers' Week. Um, definitely wasn't something that, that, that we were happy with. We um, got the Sport and Economics uh, module that was taught by Lisa. Um, I use that in, in kind of everyday work. Um, so at City, we've got different pricing strategies for different games. We've just had a game against Barcelona and we're using it as a link sell. So if you want to buy tickets for Barcelona, you have to buy tickets for another game as well. So maximising revenue based on the kind of supply and demand. There's a, obviously a big demand for, for a game like that. Um, a big thing that I want to talk about in this kind of presentation is, is work placement and, and getting real life experiences at work. Um, so I did my work placement at Macclesfield Town Football Club. So I tried to get United, City, Bolton, all the North West teams I was trying to get in there. And basically Macclesfield was the only team that would actually have us. Um, so I know that they're not a, not a big team, but it gave us a lot of scope to do a lot of work there because what Macclesfield do with 10 people, City do with 100 people. So I could work on selling advertising boards, selling shirt sponsorships, putting children's fun days on, things like that. <coughs> Where at City you have different departments who will look after that and there'll be a lot more people uh, who will be involved in that. Um, so I think even if you're going to do it for free, then, then go for it. If you get a chance to do any workplace learning, then, then go for it, do it, take advantage of it. Um, and, and, and the experience, as I say, there is going to be invaluable. Um, what I'll put a little note on the bottom is that I think personally that the degree in the CV, the covering letter, will get you the interview because some people just get discarded if they haven't got the right uh, CV or the right, right degree. But it's your experience and your personality that's going to actually get you the job because the amount of people in here that are going to have first, two ones, two twos, you need something that's going to set you apart and, uh, from, from the competition basically. Um, so working, now moving on to Manchester City, so the recruitment process was quite a thorough one to be fair. We had to do a video interview, um, or CV covering letter first of all, send that in. Then we had to do a, um, a video interview, so we had to basically come up with a, a, a five minute video of why we should, should have the job. Um, so I used my experience at Macclesfield, went down to Macclesfield, went onto the pitch, filmed my interview from the pitch. Uh, and instead of me talking about why I think I should get the job, I actually asked the, the commercial officer at Macclesfield to talk in, on my behalf why I should get the job. So it just backs up um, rather than me talking about how good I am. There's someone else talking about how good I am, which, which obviously helps a little bit. <laughs> um, the recruitment day then was down in London, so it was a two-day recruitment day. Um, uh, Casey asked me to put lots of pictures on there, so sorry about the, the pictures. Um, but the picture there with the trophy was on the recruitment day. We had a big presentation, we had Tom Glick, who's the Chief Commercial Officer down there. Um, we had the, the Premier League trophy down there. A big presentation to get everyone kind of hyped up about the job and the prospects of working for Manchester City. Um, after the first assessment day, which was all about kind of teamwork, how you work in a team, there's lots of tasks where the interviewers weren't actually involved, they just sat back and watched how we worked. Um, we didn't find out if we had the job or if we got through to the next stage until about 7 o'clock at night, so I was waiting in London without a hotel or anything, wondering if I'd get through. Eventually got the call and stayed for the next day did the interview and that was a one-on-one -on -one interview um, and then was actually successful and, and got the job. Um, I think what helped me with that was that, I don't know if you still do it, but we had um, assessment days at night, so I went and did, did one of the assessment days at night, unfortunately didn't get the job, um, which I was actually gutted about at the time, but the experience going through the assessment day, it stood me in, in great stead when I went for the city job because I kind of knew what to expect um, and, and it was a bit more prepared really. Um, so now my, my job role at Manchester City, um, so it's business development exec, so what I do is pretty much sell the hospitality on a match day and the conference and events on a non-match day. So we've got these different suites, we've got boxes, we've got four restaurants, we've got experience boxes, I thought I'd put that in there um, just to give you an idea, especially for 
some of the ladies, without being too, too sexist, but the ladies absolutely love this Harvey Nichols box. Basically what we do is we send two staff from Harvey Nichols in to the box on a match day. The guests arrive two and a half hours before, champagne reception, complimentary drinks, and then they have the box dressed with all the latest fashions, bags, shoes, whatever you like, whatever brands you like. Um, you watch the game, you have your food, then after the game you can either do whiskey tasting, cocktail making classes, or wine tasting. So that's just some of the, the other things. It can be a bit of an expensive day, especially if you're going out watching the football and then you come back and your wife or your girlfriend's bought a few bags or a few, a few pairs of shoes. Um, but what I do on a, on a, on a non-match day is to basically um, find companies and organisations that look to use our facilities to entertain their clients. So they'll entertain the clients to build relationships with them on a personal level. Um, they'll also do them to, use them to, to thank them for the business. Um, so what I have to do is, is either lead source using LinkedIn, looking at uh, industry reports, industry magazines, uh, the latest news in Manchester. So if, if say, a big if BBC moving down to Manchester, what would they do for a staff rewards? Would they maybe take a table for the season and send the staff there as a bit of a reward scheme? And we also get leads inbound from people who want to buy hospitality themselves. And also we have um, campaigns that run. We've got a new thing called Mint at the moment, which is basically a database. And it gives us information on when the budgets are up for a company, how much turnover they've made. So when I'm speaking to the decision maker, and they say, well, we haven't got any budget yet. I say, well, you've not even decided your budget. You decided your budget this month. But not, obviously, a little bit, a little bit more <laughs> polite than that. Um, on, a non, on a match day, um, we work, have not missed a, a match since Leeds two years ago. So we have to work all the home matches. Um, basically, what we do is we go over and, and it's just to meet the customers that you've talked to on the phone and booked in. Um, just make sure that everything's okay for them, build the relationships with, with, with those people and the guests that they bring. Um, and I think a lot of that, yeah, I was saying to uh, Casey before, I was just, before I, I even come to university, I was, a, I was a waiter and a barman, and I think that helped me a lot. Just the experience of going over to people that you've never met, to a table that you've never met, and just, just talking to them, having a bit of banter about the game, about who they think is going to win, and just building relationships with them on like a personal level. Um, so, so the away trips as well. Um, so what I'm doing on Saturday, I've got an away trip down in London. So we're, we're um, hiring out a big yacht. We're going to pick up all the corporate customers, take them from South Embankment down to Stamford Bridge. We're going to have uh, champagne reception. Jamie Oliver's company does all the food. £200 a ticket. And then I'll be going down on the day, just making sure everything's OK. We're just hosting them, really. Um, so it's not a bad little perk for, for the job, really. <laughs> Um, so this is just my NCFC highlight, so what we've been up to again, excuse the pictures. Um, the sales figures I've done since I've been at City, 1.5 million um, in sales. The seasonal campaign, so it's run basically half of the job seasonal, so it's selling tickets for every single game, or selling tickets just for one-off games. So we had a seasonal um, sales campaign that was run by an American company called Legends, who someone you may want to research, a massive uh, in America, they look after New York Yankees, Dallas Cowboys, Miami Heat. They do all the hospitality and sales for, for, for those teams. And they set basically a sales competition. Whoever sells the most gets to go to New York for two days, all paid for spending money and go and watch Liverpool versus City at the New York Yankee Stadium. So I was lucky enough to actually win that competition. Um, so I went to New York, uh, four days, helicopter ride and things like that. It was absolutely amazing. Um, the... The, the seasonal sales target, I actually hit 198%, so if I sold one more seat, we would have doubled the, the target that I was actually set at the start of the season. Um, I've got a couple of high-profile deals on here. Um, so Forex uh, are a big trading company, and if you can see back here, behind Vincent Company, when I very first started at Man City, I took a call from a um, consultancy who were looking for a box for the season. Um, it started out as just a, them taking clients and using the box for entertaining purposes. But I knew that from having a conversation with the guy and building a relationship that it could be a little bit bigger than, than, than what I was involved in. So I passed it through to our partnerships team. Anyway, they seen the, the potential in the deal and they ended up signing it for £1.5 million. And then you can see on Match of the Day and things like that, when you see the players getting interviewed, you can see Forex in the background um, so it's quite, on a personal level, it's, it's, quite, it's quite a proud moment really to see something that you've worked on 
um, and see it on, on kind of live TV, match of the day, things that you're watching with your friends. Um, the added benefits from working at Manchester City or working in the sport industry is tickets to different sporting events, you get to meet some of the players, um, we get to go on away days, corporate trips, been down to Wembley, been down to all the London clubs this year to watch the games, um, and then finally the future. So Manchester City's future, they've obviously got New York City, Melbourne City and Yokohama. Basically what City are trying to do is they've got this thing called City Football Group, it's an umbrella company, and what they're going to do is they're going to keep buying different clubs in different territories, so maybe Bangalore City next. Um, the idea is that if you're a fan in New York of New York City, that you'd also, if you watch the Premier League, you'd be a fan of Manchester City. If you're in Melbourne watching the uh, A-League, you'd also watch Manchester City as well. And then when we go and do our sponsorship deals, um, like Casey's big kind of sponsorship module, um, we can actually get more money and generate more money because we're not just selling the sponsorship rights for one club in one area, we're selling it, we're selling it for the whole City Football Group, so you're targeting Australia, America, um, England. Um, the, on a personal level, for myself, um, is that the two routes that I really want to go down. So I have a partnership sales, so that's like your big deals with Nike, Etihad, the sponsorship deals that, that are signed for millions and millions of pounds, or to go down the sales manager route, um, where you, I'd obviously go into to a more managerial position, um, and that's the decision I need to make in the next couple of weeks, really. Um, and final points for, for, for yourselves, I'd always think that research should be prepared. Um, I put some things up here, like LinkedIn is where I actually got the job, and I found out about the job from City was on LinkedIn, and it was for a com company called Sports Recruitment International. Um, so I used lots of um, recruitment companies as soon as I finished uni, I needed to get a job, I knew I wanted to get into the workplace. And you need to, to use the specific ones for, for the specific industry that you want to work in, really, because you end up coming back with jobs for manager of being Lidl, manager of Aldi, things like that, that has got nothing to do with what you want to do. So make sure you're very specific um, when, you're, when you're looking for certain jobs. Um, it may take a little bit of time, but, but don't jump into things. Um, keep informed, like I said, use LinkedIn. Keep informed at industry magazines. There's a magazine called FC Business that I use a lot. Look at the adverts, look who you advertise in there. There's leads in there for me to call. There's also jobs that are advertised in there. Um, gain experience. Like I said at the very start, work placements, if you can do it for free, then it may, it may seem like it's a bit of, a bit of a pain to, to, to work for free for, for three weeks. But in the long term, if that's going to get you a job, that's going to get you the money and the job satisfaction that you want, what's three weeks of working for free in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things? Um, and then finally, um, get noticed. Um, work hard and, and celebrate your successes and document them um, so, so you can use them in the future. There's no point having successes and wins if, if you're not going to be able to, to, to shout about them in the future when you go for future jobs. Um, that's about it really. Thank you and uh, good luck.